Chapter 3 The harvest was an even bigger success than they had hoped. The work was hard, especially as the farm machinery was designed for human beings. But the pigs were so clever that they could think of a way around every difficulty. The horses knew every inch of the field. They understood how to mow and rake far better than Jones and his men. The pigs did not actually work, but directed and supervised the others. With their superior knowledge, it was natural that they should assume the leadership. Every animal helped to turn and gather the hay. Even the ducks and hens worked all day in the sun, carrying tiny wisps of hay in their beaks. In the end, they finished the harvest two days early, and it was the biggest harvest that the farm had ever seen. The animals had never been so happy. Every mouthful of food was pure pleasure because it was their own food produced by themselves and for themselves. There were many difficulties, but the pigs with their cleverness and Boxer with his tremendous muscles always pulled them through. Everyone admired Boxer. He had been a hard worker even in Jones's time, but now he seemed more like three horses than one. From morning to night, he was pushing and pulling. His answer to every problem, every setback, was, I will work harder. The quarrelling and biting and jealousy of the old days almost disappeared. Molly was not good at getting up in the mornings. She also had a way of leaving work saying, There's a stone in my hoof. The behaviour of the cat was also a little peculiar. When there was work to be done, she could never be found. She would vanish for hours, only to reappear at meal times. But she always made excellent excuses and purred affectionately. Old Benjamin, the donkey, seemed quite unchanged since the rebellion. He did his work in the same slow, obstinate way. He never shirked, but never volunteered for extra work either. About the rebellion, he would express no opinion. Donkeys live a long time. None of you has ever seen a dead donkey. On Sundays... There was no work. Breakfast was an hour later than usual, and after breakfast, there was a weekly ceremony. First came the hoisting of the flag. Snowball had found Mrs. Jones' old green tablecloth and painted a hoof and a horn onto it. The flag is green to represent the green fields of England. Snowball explained. The hoof and horn represent the future republic of the animals. After the hoisting of the flag in the farmhouse garden, all the animals trooped into the big barn. At what became known as the meeting, the work of the coming week was planned out. Proposals, called resolutions, were also put forward and debated. It was always the pigs who proposed the resolutions. The other animals understood how to vote but could never think of any resolutions of their own. Snowball and Napoleon dominated the debates but were never in agreement. Whatever suggestion either of them made The other opposed it. There were many angry arguments over the correct retiring age for each class of animal, for example. The meeting always ended with the singing of Beasts of England.
The pigs had set aside the harness room as their headquarters. Here, in the evenings, they studied books, like 1,000 useful things to do on your farm, which they had brought out of the farmhouse. Snowball also organised the other animals into what he called animal committees. He formed the Egg Production Committee for the hens and the Clean Tails League for the cows. On the whole, these projects were a failure. His reading and writing classes, however, were a great success. Pigs could already read and write perfectly. The dogs were only interested in reading the Seven Commandments. Benjamin could read as well as any pig, but never bothered. There's nothing worth reading, he liked to say. Clover learnt the whole alphabet, but could not put the words together. Boxer could not get beyond the letter D. Molly only learned six letters, which spelt her own name. She would form these very neatly out of pieces of twig and decorate them with a flower or two. None of the other animals could get further than the letter A. Sheep, hens and ducks were unable to learn the Seven Commandments by heart. After much thought, Snowball declared that the Seven Commandments could be reduced to just one. Four legs good, two legs bad, was written on the end wall of the barn, above the Seven Commandments, and in even bigger letters. Napoleon took no interest in Snowball's committees. Only the education of the young is important for the rebellion, he said. Soon after Jessie and Bluebell gave birth to their puppies, Napoleon took them away from their mothers. I will be personally responsible for their education, he said. <laughs>